You know that moment when you finally finish a quilt top and you think, yes, I get to get to the machine quilting, but oh, I need to make the backing first? I totally understand that moment. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make a stash buster pieced quilt back that can either match or contrast with your quilt top. So this is the backing for the quilt I did in the Twinkling Twilights episode, and I love the red and the ombres, how it goes from the darker to the pink, it's beautiful. But I got a little bit of a stash, so I thought it would be fun to throw in some extra fabrics and create a piece backing that's quick to piece, but still looks interesting. So I've spent the last couple minutes digging through all my fabrics, and I think these are the ones I'm going to use. Now when you're picking fabrics for your back, it doesn't have to match, or it could, it just depends on what you feel like using. But I know that I love the ombre, so I have some more blue ombre. I have a little couple scraps of batik that I just couldn't bear to get rid of. Those are from the Star Power episode, and I just love the fabric. This is the boundless collage I used for the puzzle quilt when I was making it at a quilt festival. That was such a fun time. Got the star squared fabric a couple solids, we know I love solids, and I thought a pop of green would be really pretty against all that blue and the cream, so nice. Boundless Botanicals, oh, what was that one from? Oh, that one was from Bear Tracks, love that one. And this one, I thought it looked good with the red, but I don't know, it's not really going with the rest, so I better save that for another time. And then just more random scraps that I have. So what I'm going to do is put away my bigger chunks of fabric. This is gonna make up the bulk of my backing. And I'm gonna cut all these fabrics into strips that are the same width. When dealing with scraps and fabrics from your stash, you're probably gonna have all different sizes of chunks of fabric. So what I'm gonna do is just take a second and trim them all to the same width. And it can be whatever width you like. And I'm gonna go with eight inches. Why? I don't know, it just sounds like a good number. This will go into another smaller piece of fabric stash pile. And even these little strips, I'm still gonna cut them eight inches because I wanna work them in to the backing somehow. All right. I think that's gonna look so pretty with the red fabric. Now what I'm gonna do is open them up and cut them into rectangles of different widths so I have an improvisational looking quilt bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them into rectangles of different widths because when I piece it together in one long row, I don't want them to all be the same size, mostly because that just takes a lot of thinking and I wanna keep this nice and easy. So what I'll do is I'm gonna take my fabric and I'm just gonna overlap them in random spots. I'm gonna trim the selvage off of this piece. The selvage of a fabric is actually woven a little differently, so we don't want that in our quilt backs because it will make it pull a little different. So make sure all the selvages are taken off the fabric. I mean, there's nothing wrong with you. You're perfect in every way, just not for my quilt back. Another selvage. Okay, so when I have them overlapped in random spots, and I'm gonna make sure that that cut is nice and straight, but I'm not worried about any of the pieces being any certain width. So what'll happen is now I'll have pieces of fabric that are different widths, and I'm basically just gonna sew them together in one long random strip and sew them in between my bigger pieces of fabric. So I'm gonna keep cutting, get enough rectangles to make my longer strip, and then we'll get to the piecing. Now when you're cutting your rectangles out, just remember the more narrow you make your pieces, the more piecing you have to do. So I'm gonna have some narrower ones, but I'm gonna throw some wider ones in there too because I just wanna get to the machine quilting. So I'm gonna sew these strips into one long strip that's wider than my quilt. And I'm gonna make the placement random. So I'm gonna chain piece these by sewing them into groups of two and then sewing those groups together. So the one thing I'm gonna do just a little different is I'm gonna sew them together with a half inch seam. Since this is going on the back of my quilt, I want it to have a little bit more sturdiness, be able to hold up to a little bit more use. So I'm putting that quarter inch seam aside and sewing it together with a half inch seam. All right, gonna trim them apart and then sew them together in groups of two. <laughs> 
Once I'm done piecing all these rectangles into one long strip that's long enough to fit across the width of my quilt, I'm gonna iron it and then sew it on to the backing pieces. And the back is finally pieced, and now all that's left to do is to make a quilt sandwich and quilt it. Should be easy enough. And there's a pieced back that's almost as pretty as the front. And if you want more ideas for piecing your quilt backs, check out Creative Quilt Backs class with Elizabeth Hartman. The details are below.